Hi, I'm Elizabeth Poglidge. I'm the assistant principal at Variety School. I've been in Clark County since 2005. I started my teaching career in Connecticut in a, as a diverse learning strategist, which is basically what we call a resource teacher in Clark County. And when I came here, I started in a resource setting on a comprehensive campus. And as I saw the population of kiddos with autism increase significantly, that's kind of the area of my passion. Um, and then my son was diagnosed at the age of three with autism on the higher functioning end, which also gave me a huge push to better, um, I think, all of Clark County's education for children with autism. And that's what kind of led me to Variety School. So to me, that they run an amazing project. Our collaboration with Cleveland Clinic's Children's Hospital has taught us um, very meaningful steps with working with these kiddos and with the most aggressive and severe. And we run a very successful garden with our population, which is probably gonna look very differently than comprehensive campuses. And we run it with elementary all the way through postgraduates. So that's me. Gary Manning, I'm at Coronado High School and we have had a school garden for six years. We started on Earth Day six years ago, and we just had a, a, a big celebration in our garden. Uh, we have about a half an acre. We have, we have the largest school orchard in the garden. We have 28 fruit trees. We have 15 raised beds, and we have a lot of rabbits, um, <laughs> which is a little bit of a problem this year. We haven't had a rabbit problem until this year. We built some new beds, and we didn't put rabbit fencing around them. But um, So I work. My, my primary emphasis, my, what I teach is the LIF class, and my goal in life is to get more of the, the kids out there. We, have a, we are a comprehensive campus, and, so, and our garden is about as far to the other end of the campus as you could be. And so sometimes, and we were talking in the presentation this morning about exercise, my kids, they don't even know they're exercising, but they love to go to the garden. We have, a, we have a, uh, depending on the day, we have several tortoises that we have um, adopted, we're down to one today, but we take the tortoise out, we put it on the grass, we, feed, we just have fun, and the kids are exercising, they're learning, and, they're, and then we have food. Um, Lisa, we've, she's come to our school, we've had some fun, and we just have a good time. Well, I, I was gonna say the benefits, it, it's amazing, get them out of the classroom, and, and the things you talk about, that informal learning, and the, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of a couple of kids in particular. One who, this is his third year at our school, and he was the problem child. And we would go to the garden, and it was always a disaster. Now he comes out, he knows exactly what to do, he's ready to go to work, he loves working in the garden, and it's just such a great, great thing for him. And then we get to eat what we grow. Well, we have, we have three big strawberry towers, and so we just go out and we'll pick strawberries and eat them right in the garden, and, and the kids have a good time. But to watch these kids grow and to, to be able to work, and you know, my big thing is I kind of have a threefold motto. I say they have to listen, follow directions, and be socially appropriate. If they can do that in my garden, they can do that anywhere in any program after high school. And, and it's a great opportunity to teach that. So at Variety, again, we work with a very unique population and we still have a ways to go. I've gone to plenty of campuses that are running amazing programs. But for where we are in the process, I think we've made significant gains. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with the term horticultural therapy. Um, it's one of those up and coming things that a lot of people are doing. Um, it talks, the, the, the rationale behind it is the connection to digging for, for kids with autism, breaking the sensories, um, a lot of them have sensory issues, so touching the different uh, vegetables, the dirt, the wet, the mud, um, you're exposing them to sensory or, you know, decreasing their, their um, desensitizing. Desensitizing, yes. Desensitizing. <laughs> and you're giving them specific directions. You're, it's really easy to make a task analysis type activity with planting something. And, um, oh, I thought you were raising your hands, sorry. 
And for us, we connect it with speech, we connect it with OT, and we, we have very few kiddos with physical therapy, but there is a way that we can connect it to physical therapy. So they're basically the ones that run everything in the garden. They're the ones that run the outside. Um, they do the planting, the digging. Uh, they help with the watering. They work with the farmers. They also take their produce because we have a full functioning student kitchen. So it feeds us, um, the staff. So they take their food and they're able to make salads or, or whatever they're deciding. We don't have um, a stove in that area, but we do have one in um, the faculty lounge, so they, they, they actually make us lunch whenever they can harvest. And they also, um, they have hy hydroponic, in, in different classrooms they run those, and uh, one of the other, divided up, has, does all the composting. Um, our greenhouse, because we actually have a greenhouse, unfortunately our neighborhood, every time we've run it, had it up and running, it's been vandalized. So we've kind of just store everything in it, because it's very expensive to replace the, well, the air conditioning unit in it was damaged and the, the panels have been damaged, so. And our lower ones, our, our younger students do a lot of the planting of the initial seeds. Yes, and um, a lot of the designing of the gardens in terms of um, art and uh, drawing pictures, uh, designing our decorations around it, and it's completely individualized for each one of our students. It just depends on what their IEPs say and what, what the programs are looking for. And ours is very similar to that as well, and it, it kind of depends on the day, depends on the season. Um, we take a lot of the produce that we have, like this year we were first, this is the first year we've harvested asparagus. Took it back in the classroom, and my one rule about that is, everybody has to try it. And, and if you've ever had kids come up and ask you for more Brussels sprouts, you know you're on the right track. We have the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Grant, which is an elementary grant that, um, that is wonderful. So that's one of the first steps for our kiddos to be able to taste, touch, and, and expose them to things that we not necessarily can't grow, but um, all the different types of taste that, that they could see and actually feel. Yeah. We also have that. While we're asking this question, we also see um, a lot of engagement with our students. They tend to follow directions, and we, we see less uh, behaviors because it's so fast, it's so engaging, and there isn't any downtime. So that's something else that, for our students, it's extremely beneficial. Especially if you have a lot of boys. We put some decomposed granite down in our garden on the, on the uh, entryway, and, and I designed it specifically for wheelchair access. And so it's a, <laughs> I created a little bit of a problem with the wheelchair access, but we can still get people in and out. But it, we'd set it up so that that was exactly, the gardens were at the height that even on a wheelchair, theoretically, and I emphasize theoretically because when you put the rabbit fencing on, it creates a little bit of a problem. I have one little girl who is in a, a wheelchair and she has CP. You would be surprised at the activities that we have her do. I got her over and I basically pushed her wheelchair right into the middle of the lemon tree and she picked lemons. Because everybody's gonna be involved. And so it, depending on how you design it, and you can be a little creative. I've, I've spent a long time trying to figure out how we were gonna get her out there and keep her battery charged in her wheelchair. So it works. This past summer, I worked with um, somebody from UNLV, and I wish I could remember, and UNR, that there are grants right now uh, that they're writing, and I wish I could remember their titles, that, that can be, they're working with um, the state to, and federal governments to receive funding to make gardens that were already in place more inclusive for all students. And most specifically, they're talking about making them um, chair height so they can transfer right to the edge of a garden and can sit if they can sit safely in a garden so you can just you know transfer and then have tools that you can have to hold them in place if they don't have the ability to sit up but UNR and UNLV um, are working collaboratively and there's a one of their offices is here right on UNLV and if I could find that information or if Absolutely. I feel like maybe somebody from Greener Our Planet was with me when we did the tour, because okay. I'll have to look back on it.
Let them pull them. I have kids, and that's the hard thing to do. And you have to, you have to decide, am I raising plants and am I raising peaches or am I trying to teach kids? So when they go down and we learn about thinning the fruit and they thin more fruit than they're supposed to, my heart cringes because I work so hard, but they're working. They're working. And so uh, the way I say in our garden is everything's an experiment. And, and if it works, great. But this kid, well, let me t I'll tell you one quick story about another kid who came, brand new kid, came from California. And we, our garden is totally fenced. And I thought we had bulletproofed everything. And he went over by the side of the fence, picked up the only rock that was available in the garden, threw it up over the fence, and hit a car. <laughs> so they, uh, anyway, so we watch that, but, but as a rule, uh, we just give them a lot of time. I spend a lot of time with them, teach them, they watch and learn. And with our school too, this is probably one of the best things that we have is we have student aides that'll come out there and they watch these guys work. They watch me work, they watch the other kids who've been there working. And so over a, over a period of time, they pick it up. And it's just amazing to see that growth. We try to introduce a skill in the classroom before we have them apply it to the um, outside. And we know how some students are with scissors or w whatever, so they might not be the ones that are cutting, but they might be the ones that are collecting the, the stuff and holding the basket and just making sure everybody's engaged in an activity, but um, they kind of have to earn their trust and, the, and, and, and demonstrate the ability to do something before we, we put them there because Depending on the level of functioning of your student, a student with scissors can be very dangerous. A student with a rock could be very dangerous. A shovel. A shovel. Um, <laughs> and, and that's with any kid. That's with typical kids. My, my own children, I bought them. I went to Springs Preserve and I got them the, the little gardening tools that match mine. And, and I was all excited. The next thing I know that there was a sword fight and with the rakes and shovel. And my husband was like, I can't believe you actually bought real metal tools for the kids. <laughs> Plastic ones don't work. And, desert landscaping. So it's all trial by error. I don't think there's any right answer. And um, to me, it's having high standards, high expectation, and making this experience so exciting that everybody wants to be a part of it. And, and that's kind of helped us a bit. And fun. Make it fun so that, you know, at the end of the day, they come out, they go, they don't even know they're working. There are so many things you can do. We did, we did ladybugs one year, okay? So we learned all about what good they were. And I, I brought two containers at Star Nursery, brought them into the classroom. One of my students accidentally opened the lid in the classroom. So we, we had ladybugs all through our class. But what's really cool is now going to the garden and we actually have the ladybugs who have had babies and continued on. And so my kids are looking for the ladybugs now. <laughs> I so, have the same thing with butterflies. So whatever you do, it, it, it doesn't. It, oh, they think they're theirs every time they see yeah. one. Yeah. That's mine. Does anyone remember when we had that outbreak in Las Vegas of, of ladybugs? Yeah. Yes. It was so, a few yeah. years yeah. back, yeah. it was like yeah. you'd yeah. open your windows and there was literally like 300 ladybugs. <laughs> it was. Like Elizabeth said, I mean, you don't, it doesn't have to be great. It does, it just have fun so that they learn and they remember. I mean, get kids who remember. I've been doing butterflies for 17 years. Every year I do butterflies. And those kids that come back to me that are 19 and 20 years old, that's what they tell me they remember and love the most was when we did the butterfly unit. And you can connect their, connect their life cycle to the cycle of a seed. There's the life cycle, it's the stages, actually seeing it from, from start to finish and, and the fact that um, the Springs Preserves has one of the most amazing butterfly, butterfly yes. exhibits, is, is amazing. Colorado's has I wanted to share something. Last year we did the uh, warm compost. They loved it. Actually, they did it in like uh, five groups and they had labels, everything, and uh, they made the warm room sheet. They made their rules. I said, we have class rules, why, how, why don't you make warm rules? So they made warm rules, how to touch them, how to treat them, right? Because they're doing awesome job for our earth. <laughs> so they made their rule sheet and they posted on each uh, container. And then they 
thoroughly followed it. <laughs> I love it. And, and you know, with the worm, it's kind of fun. There's a, a species called the al Alabama jumpers, yes. and you hold them in their hand, and they, they jump. jump. <laughs> and you put those in one of those kids' hand, and it is just, and they they're so excited to see that kind of stuff. So. So at Variety, we unfortunately don't have a specific period. Like period two is gardening, and you have students assigned to that. What we do is we purchase the prep of teachers that are able to run at that time. And depending on the level of behavior, which is always an ongoing with our students, and their ability to show that they're ready to work in the garden is how we, we put them in that rotation. Um, some days it's busier than others, depending on the time of year and, and what's going on. Um, getting ready for the farmer's market, I know we were, our, our garden was full time for, for, for the, the days before it. Um, but we make sure that the skill is introduced as early as possible. It's, they can demonstrate mastery or, or, or the engagement of it, the outcome, safely. And that's when we allow them to, to transition into the actual garden. But a majority of our secondary classrooms have some sort of um, in-classroom garden, whether it's a tub of dirt, um, whether it's the wall of our hy hydroponics, um, our composting classroom. So again, we just kind of rotate the kids through, but they definitely have to show that success in that classroom before they can access the outside. And it's a safety issue for us. One, we've, we've done it a couple of different ways. One of the ways I see Farmer Joe back there going, oh my goodness, these guys are at it again. We've, we've tried a couple of different things where we would try like, my class with the life skills would come by themselves, and then we tried where we would put everybody together. Autism, SEC, SLD, LIF. That, that ain't cool. That, 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 that did not work for us really well. So, so I find personally it's easier if we break it up into little smaller groups and you say small. I, I have, you know, typically I'll have 15 kids in my class, but they're pretty much on the same learning level. And so I would tell the farmers, I'd say, if you can get a 10 minute lesson in, I'm thrilled. And if you can get a three minute, I'm still thrilled. So breaking them up into smaller groups has probably been easier for us. Yeah, we, we, just did one, we just did one the other day where, in fact, um, Carrie Burke is here from her school from Montessori Foothill, and they have a learning, uh, a service learning component of their learning. So they brought all, uh, I don't know, I think there was about 50, I don't know how old they were, fifth graders, I think. They came to our garden and we had a big, huge project that we worked for a couple hours in the garden. So, and I, I, my garden is open to anybody that ever wants to come. And we have a, enough flexibility in my schedule that I can go there, but I'd, I'd be thrilled if other people would come and use it. I can't get my people at my own school to come and use it, so. Even with the first question, the second question, we, our, our, our biggest struggle sometimes is the adults versus the students. It's because for us, it's new. I mean, I'm first generation from Canada, and my grandparents and father have always had gardens that are ridiculous in size. We're, you know, champion pumpkin growers and yeah, at the county good. fair, and so it's something that's been a part of my life for, for a very long time. Living in the desert is something I still haven't mastered. I mean, <laughs> I don't have a home garden, but... Right, and so with, with us, it's the finding, and this isn't, a, this isn't a ploy on our staff in any way, shape, or form. I think that they work hard, and, and I don't blame them for being exhausted, because we are always on the go, but to get them to learn, this is something new. There's, there's professional development, and, and getting simple things done, like scheduling the chef to come out, and, 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 and coming out and seeing our gorgeous, you know, cabbage and all of a sudden it's all gone and we're thinking to ourselves, does something in the community steal it? And you find out it's, no, it's three teachers that thought that we were gonna take all of our cabbage and make, you know, spicy cabbage, you know? Ours was broccoli. So, came and so, so we're all, we're all, our strength is in managing students. I think my boss and I, you know, the principal and I, is ours is managing the, the, the staff. And um, it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of comical because they always have a great rationale for what was going on and, and how come they can't or how come they could. And we always just put it back on the students. Like how disappointing for our kids that were so excited to harvest this 
head of lettuce, and if anyone's from my generation, you just think of those Cabbage Patch kids. I mean, I just, I, I thought my, you know, Judith Gale was gonna come out of that, that um, cabbage head, and I still know her name, but um, the students got over it pretty quickly. <laughs> I don't know how that is at yours. It's, it's very similar, and that really is the biggest challenge, even getting the special ed people. We did, when we did our uh, Earth Day the other day, I offered free hot dogs and snow cones to anybody that would come out, and I actually had more students who came out from other, from some of the gen ed classes and from the other special ed classes, and they're like, wow, we didn't even know this existed. And so food and taste is them to come out, so. Again, it depends on the day, depends on the situation. Um, you know, if it's raining, we learn all kinds of new things about mud and different things. And so, again, my kids are, most of my kids are at about a first grade level. And so, so we have to kind of be, the, the word I teach them is flexible. And so we go out and, and we learn a lot of different things depending on the, that situation, so. Well, we kind of just were winging it for the first few years and um, just trying to connect it to uh, the success of the garden. And when we kind of took a step back and made it realize that it's gotta be the success of the student is when we started seeing um, more buy-in from our teachers. And while we don't have a specific curriculum, when we design, we, we make what's called curriculum binders for each of our students and we tie a task to each goal. And when we develop the scope and sequence of that goal, we try to make it a life skill. So younger kids might, might be more of an actual, uh, I do this and this comes out, cause and effect. With the older, it's tying it to what kind of job, looking at their vocational um, abilities and seeing if that, that following direction, taking turns, waiting, all those things can, can, they can demonstrate during working. Um, my son had the opportunity to be taught by one of the best teachers in Clark County, Mrs. Cormier. And just, just being exposed to, to Lamas Elementary School and seeing how their garden ran and seeing what my son did uh, helped me bring this information to my teachers and, and, and ensure that across the content areas that people were exposing and using. So in art, they had worm tubes. Um, last year, I think they made them, or the year before, and so like basically had to demand the art teacher, you're making worm tubes, like we need these, we need these to go. So they made them, they never used them. Um, my son would come home with his journal and he would, talk, it was all talking about like what the leaves look like and that observation piece. So just taking these little sp specks of general ed curriculum and tying it to someone, even if it's one kiddo, um, and I would s snapshots, each, each learning pod at Lummis had a grade level five minute um, little quick mini lesson that they can use in the garden. Uh, I, I believe Mrs. Cormier developed those um, and just showing how short and quick it could be and how beneficial. Um, I look at a lot of information through lifelab.org. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar. They have a lot of information for me. They, they also talk a little bit about the special needs component and when I go in to meet with my teachers, I always try to have some research-based re-rationale of why we're doing what we're doing. Um, so I'm learning as they're learning. And that's a key, is you keep learning and you keep trying new things. And again, I, I, at the beginning I said, everything we do is an experiment. If it doesn't work, we start over. The rabbits are eating us out of house and home this year, but our pollinator garden is going crazy. And we actually got some, some seeds from, from some of the penstemon that are now growing in our garden. And we have about 25 uh, milkweed plants that are growing. We're, we're still waiting for some butterflies to find our garden, but we do have, we, we have a place for them. Just, just have fun, really, that's the key. Have fun, teach and enjoy what you're doing and, and, and don't, you don't have to succeed, you don't have to be perfect at it, just keep going, keep going and, and it'll be, it'll succeed. And if you make it, and just like with our students, if you give yourself an attainable goal once a week for 10 minutes, we're gonna figure something out on how to do it. You're gonna realize that that was easy to make and then you, you okay, next, next year we're gonna do two, twice for 10 minutes and maybe we'll do it, you know, increase it to 15 minutes. So if you give yourself an attainable goal and educate yourself, you'll realize that the, the kids are the easy part. It's, it's us bending from 
teaching what we want to teach or what we need to teach in our testing schedules. It's harder, obviously, in the high school and the secondaries when you're dealing with first period, second period, third period, but I'm sure that there's always a way that you can propose to your administration, hey, I have this great idea, and this is what I'd like to do, and if you can give a good rationale and what the outcome's gonna be, there's absolutely no way that they're gonna say no. At least I don't think they would. <laughs>